Hello everyone, Mary here, and we're going to talk about temperature in this video, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the cooling effects of evaporation. First off, let's define temperature. Temperature is defined as the average internal kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance. So, hot is defined as molecules that are moving really, really quickly. High kinetic energy means an awful lot of velocity. Cold molecules vibrate very, very slowly. So when you've got cold molecules, they're going to be moving very, very slowly in a substance. When those molecules get hot, what you're doing to them is making them move with a much higher velocity and much faster rate of speed. So temperature really is talking about the internal kinetic energy of the molecules inside of something. One of the favorite questions I like to ask on quizzes is this question. What device is used to measure the average internal kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance? Well, of course it is. It's a thermometer. But it is a sneaky way for me to make sure that people understand the definition of temperature. So let's talk about this average internal kinetic energy. As you know from math class, if you take a, a bell curve, this is a picture of a bell curve, um, if you've got a random distribution of every of anything, you're going to have the, the center, um, and the center is going to represent the average. Now, the average for the speed or the kinetic energy of the molecules of something, that's what that temperature is going to be. Now what that means is within any sample of water or Kool-Aid or hot metal or whatever you're talking about, you're going to have some molecules with a very, very high kinetic energy and some molecules with a very, very low kinetic energy. So if we're talking, for example, about a glass of water, at any moment in time, some of the molecules in that glass of water happen to be very close to boiling, very, very hot, and some of those molecules in in that glass of water happen to be very, very cold. Now here's a question for you. If I had a glass of just plain old tap water and I massed it so I knew exactly what its mass would be, and I wrote that down and then walked away, left the glass overnight, and I came back the next day and measured its mass, would the mass of the water be exactly the same or would it be higher or lower than the mass I measured the previous day? Well, yeah, it's going to be lower. Why is the water going to have slightly less mass in the glass? Because of evaporation. Well, evaporation is actually that change from a liquid into a gas. Well, when does that happen? That happens at the boiling temperature. And I have a sneaking suspicion that your kitchen counter does not get above 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So overnight, we know water is going to evaporate off that glass. What, what happened to it? Why did some of those molecules have enough energy to evaporate when the whole glass never got that hot? That comes back to our picture. Inside of this glass of water, some of the molecules down here had so much heat that they were very, very close to the boiling temperature. Well, left to their own devices, those little molecules, they by themselves went and they had enough kinetic energy to escape the bonds holding them to the rest of the water molecules. And those tiny, few escaping water molecules actually evaporated from the glass. Now let's talk about the cooling effect of evaporation. Um, many of us have had, for example, you get an injection at the doctor's and before they give you an injection, they'll take like a little bit of alcohol and they will swab your arm before you get that shot. Now when that happens, that usually feels cold. Well, why in the world will it feel cold? And it has to do with this, the cooling effect of evaporation. Here's what occurs. Let's say that, as we know, temperature is the average internal kinetic energy of the molecules of a substance. But if we take some alcohol and we swab it on your arm, 
what we've done is we have put that alcohol on your arm and the molecules of alcohol on your arm absorb some heat. They take some heat away from your arm and some of the high kinetic energy molecules are going to actually leave your arm. So what happens? What happens is the overall average is going to B, when we take these hot ones out, the overall average is going to become less. Well, if the average kinetic energy is the temperature, you take out the hot ones, the temperature is going to go down. And that's called the cooling effect of evaporation. You take out the hot molecules and the overall temp goes down. Lots of different examples of this. The one that's most familiar to everyone, of course, is perspiration. Um, your body has to cool itself. The human brain cannot get too hot. It won't function. And so your body exerts, excuse me, excretes some moisture through sweat. And as that water sweats off of your body, it removes the high kinetic energy molecules and the overall temperature then goes down, goes down. Dogs, of course, pant because they do not have external sweat glands. So their wet little tongues, high kinetic energy molecules evaporate off their wee tongues and their overall temperature goes down. Other examples of cooling effect of evaporation, we talked about the alcohol swab on the arm. The, the old-fashioned water coolers that were used 150 years ago, long before the invention of electricity, they were just big crocks. They were big pieces of pottery with a spigot inside. And what would happen, because these things are slightly porous, tiny little bit of moisture would evaporate from the outside. And as you had that tiny microscopic amount of evaporation from the outside, it would cool down what was inside. And it was literally a water cooler. Very, very cool thing. Evaporative cooling. When I was a child, um, my family took a trip to California in a car. And I remember we stopped when I was a kid at some, one of these little wayside stations. And my dad bought something that looked very much like this. It was a burlap bag. And the what you were supposed to do with it is you were supposed to fill it with water. Right up here was a little spigot. And you would open the spigot, fill this with water. You were supposed to tie it to your automobile and drive across the desert. The idea being that because burlap is kind of porous, some of the moisture would wick through the bag and evaporate and that evaporative evaporating water would cool down the water. As a child, I was not impressed by the whole drinking water out of a burlap bag that had been bouncing around on the outside of the car. But since then, I have had many, many students who are have been in the military, and they've told me about being stationed in desert climates, and they would take a water bottle, put it in a sock, get it wet, tie it to the outside of, of their Humvee or whatever they were driving, and an hour later, they would stop, and inside, that water was cold. That's pretty cool stuff. This is the reason why old-fashioned canteens were covered in fabric. If you could get that fabric damp, the damp fabric would evaporate off and remove heat from the water inside. You may have seen these cooling neck wraps at uh, county fairs or different events, summer events, concerts, things like that. They're, they're simple to make. I've had friends who've made them on their own tiny little bit of uh, cotton cloth. And then they use soil moist, which you use in plants, or it's basically the same chemical that is used in baby diapers. Um, few crystals, maybe a teaspoon of crystals are put in, in this when it's dry. And then the whole thing is soaked underwater for a couple minutes. The crystals absorb moisture. This thing gets nice and plump and moist. You tie it around your neck. The water evaporates. It keeps your neck cold. And it really, I've used them at, at different events, and they really do help keep you cold. But again, it's the evaporative cooling effect. I have never had one of these, but I have had students 
from all over the country who have talked to me about these and these are called swamp coolers is the colloquial name but they're called evaporative cooling systems um, if you live in the north country where it freezes water freezes solid every winter you do not have one of these on your house because of the fact that you have to have water source on your roof and it would not be practical if you lived in the northern climates but if you live down in the desert or then the southern parts of the united states this works really really slick this this is how it operates it's very cheap it's very economical and it's a very simple system there is some sort of a membrane um, that or a bladder and you have a water distribution system basically it's going to drip water on this membrane and as it drips water on this membrane water is going to evaporate off the membrane well where is it going to get the heat to do that from the surrounding air the air then is going to be cooled it turns from hot air into cold air if you set up a fan in front of this cold refreshing air is going to go into into your home it is kind of poor man's air conditioning and it works beautifully if you are in a hot dry climate um, if you live in a place with very very high humidity this does absolutely nothing to remove the humidity out of the air and so um, I don't recommend this if you live in a swampy part of the country but it is a pretty slick way of cooling the air all right that will do for temperature and evaporative cooling and we'll see you next time bye bye